separating life from nature, the fallacy of the natural, a response to Sopho Archon. This is our dialectical today, which we'll do twice a week. For the uh, Today is Wednesday, I believe. So it'll be Mondays and Wednesdays. Yes, that's what it will be. Comment down below if that's true. I'm going to comment down below to myself. That's true. <coughs> Sopho Archon. The writer of the article I'm responding to, called How Modern Life Separates Us from Nature, has made a proposition that, on its surface, seems straightforward. Modernity, modernity has stripped, separated us from nature. Here, let us present the excerpt as received from us by our sister site, Wirewatch.News. Then I'll get back to the point I wish to make that might offer a a presuppositional starting point that could... Mm, I'll just say, like I wrote here... Theoretically, theoretically... Let's, let's get you back up to Biggie Biggs. There we go, theoretically. Theoretically, cause so far gone to reevaluate their compartmentalizing of what is around them. Or... Maybe just cause Sofa Orcon to say, typical neckbeard, neckbeard spots, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I have no idea. I have no idea the the reasonable outlets about which Sofa Orcon swims in. And uh, I wouldn't even presume to know if Sofa Orcon is of uh, any type of gendered construct either. So, Sofa, right now you exist in a type of abstract construct of the potential of humanness and uh, and I like it I like it <coughs> all right from this is from the unbound spirit.com how modern life separates us from nature and here's here's the excerpt this is basically the, the, the opening here and you should read the rest and it's a, it's a good read I, I enjoyed it in the main and I, I say as much later <coughs> everything alive is connected. Yet most of us feel separate from nature. And from this feeling stems most of the suffering that exists in the world today. The reason why we feel separate from nature is first and foremost because we've been physically removed from it. Ever since our childhood, <coughs> many of us don't have the opportunity to spend much time in natural surroundings. This is especially true for children who grow up in big cities, who aren't allowed to spend much time outdoors and where natural spots are nearly non-existent. So they rarely have the chance to climb trees, to listen to birds, or to swim in the sea. School is also contributing to our separation from nature. Conventional schools place children in artificial environments, example, classrooms, where they are forced to stay seated for hours upon hours every day and pay attention to a board right in front of them, Rarely do classes take place in nature, and when they do, they last only for a short while. All right, now that's the end of the excerpt. <coughs> All right, now we're, 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 we've ended the excerpt. Now we're, we're back to Frico. Frico. Me. And there is much to explore as, as far as what I might assume regarding the presuppositions of Sofo Archon, many of which I might find myself in agreement with. We might, for instance, share a similar assumption regarding the nature. I should have put that in quotes. The nature of human, and I put this in quotes, learning. Because I'm not sure how much we would agree or not agree even about <coughs> what nature is, uh, what learning is. But especially regarding the types of environment, structures, disciplines, etc. adults apply to, quote unquote, teaching, unquote, quote, uh, uh, whatever. I wish I could just hit like a sound button that would let you know that you should assume quotes were putting around this particular iteration of the word. So you are teaching ding, children. I could explore multiple aspects of where this epistolary styled commentary offers opportunity for such explorations. But I'd rather for this particular expression, limit my response to the aspect of ding. There you go. Nature that so far Archon seems to presuppose exist. Nature is, for most of us, something apart 
from the majority of the world around us. And we seek after its presence in almost idolatrous, and, and I mean that in a metaphorical sense, not a literal sense, banners. I mean, not, I'm not proclaiming any kind of religious heresies anywhere. We fetishize this thing called nature. We separate the doing from the being, so to speak. The being, in this instance, is, the, uh, is this ideological construct called nature, which exists outside the evils of human action. And sometimes can never be overpowered by the puny humans. And sometimes can be existentially threatened by the hum puny humans. <clears throat> Nature is good. Man is evil. That which man made is not of nature, but of something else, something usually never named. It's, it's not simply na it's not It's simply not nature. <clears throat> we have terms to describe the family of stuff that this thing produces. Modern things, humans in boxes being told what to think, wars, murders, rapes, internet spam, Wendy's cheeseburgers. We call these things artificial, processed, chemicals, man-made, simulated, etc. And all of these labels, labels have some degree of truth to them. But do they, in and of themselves, divorce the nature from the man that made the thing? The action you cry out as being not of nature made? Humanity is but a product of the construct of being, such as we can remotely understand even the shadow of such a notion that might approach the truth of such a concept as being in the first place. That being is simply, is, as in the is is simply and there is no morality behind the design and i'm being flippant because we shouldn't assume a design in the first place do you follow the being is nature which is not nature is not but but here here let me back up the being is nature all right the being is nature but that which is not nature by extension is not being it is not nature therefore it is not being it is a thing that exists we'll put this in quotes artificially artificially something that is artificial is something that could be changed Assumed changed if you're trying to be reflective of nature, certainly. In a simulated state. And the, quote, people, unquote, who practice such artificials outsi are outside of the being itself. Now, let me offer this to you there. So far, God. Nature, my friend, is a Wendy's cheeseburger. Every bit as much as it is a ripple of water across some algae-eaten rocks on a hot, hot summer day in the middle of Nowheresville, Random Valley, and Montanavilles. The notion of nature being the totality of being itself versus the messy of doing. Of managing the need of the human with the need of the environment. And the need of the human to consider the external consequences of those exchanges to their long-term preferential pursuits. Continues to place all conversations, all political exchanges as being underpinned with an existential claim of moral angelic certainty versus the murdering false claims of demons. Nature as a concept separate from that which human hands have constructed 
is a reflection of a dualistic understanding of existence itself, which separates the good from the bad into neat containers. Containers never fully articulated because of the dual physical spiritual application of the concept of nature in the first place but with strong implications that suggest the good spirit is here and the bad spirit is here. If we can but kill the unnatural spirit and force, we can find our harmony, our discourse, in the company, once again, of nature. Nature, as your guiding light, immediately severs you from pragmatic, detached study of what is. For your underlying assumptions regarding the duality of existence, the nobility of nature versus the, the corrupt spirit of human hands, prevents you from even understanding yourself. How can a human who has divined the world in such dual ways come to face any aspect of themselves that are human if they so singularly condemn so perversely the very nature of the humans themselves? The dualistic presuppositions of Sopho Archon indeed force Sopho to condemn humanity itself and subjectively declares the ascendant value of nature as an objective, certain truth, a concept that profoundly and utterly, completely, is entirely and certainly of human hands alone made. A human-made concept of the capacity to assert universal value to all, over all, in the name of of the unformed and vague nature, the divine master of the universe. Lost my place there, because I just changed the thing to make it a little bit bigger for you. And in so doing, I lost my life. Okay. The dualistic presuppositions of Sopho Archon indeed force Sopho to condemn humanity itself and subjectively declare the ascendant of nature, the ascendant value of nature as an objective, certain truth, a concept that profoundly and utterly, completely is entirely and certainly of human hands alone made. A human made concept of the capacity to assert universal value to all overall in the name of the unformed and vague nature the divine master of the hum human race run no doubt with the aid of its allies people like Sopho Archon who will sing you the right vibes to align your life to the needs over your own pursuit of preference of course so for Archon might very well retort that humans who act in accord with nature are acting in human nature. It's only the humans that don't act in accord with nature that are acting in unnatural ways. Unnatural ways. And people do use that phrase in Archon's camp. Unnatural ways. Same, same kind of phraseology that priests use to... Uh, justify burning heretics the same kind of uh, language that psychologists psychiatrists use psychiatrists psychiatrists use to have women committed into asylums in the 1920s and 30s because they were demonstrating unnatural ways they, they basically fundamentally were 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 revolting at the conditions in which they were forced into if they were there were some women who found themselves very happy with the constructs of the marriage and the husband and all that stuff. And some women who did not, the women who did not, well, they were beat into it. Or they, uh, if they really, uh, at the end of the day, if they continued to continue to continue to resist and could not find a way to provide for their own needs, then they would eventually end up in some place where somebody would say unnatural ways and you would not see her again because she would be a dark chapter in the family history that nobody talked about, the, the crazy lady. 
he was, she was crazy. She dared dream of not being a housewife. So watch that. Just just think about that, Sofo. You're kind of swimming in those kind of seas. If Sofo Archon chooses such retort, let me preemptively state only to the Sofo Archon I am imagining because I would not wish to actually strawman anyone by arguing against an assumption I alone and assuming they might make. So, and I, and I, and this is really, really being a little flippant. I'm really, I, I know that this is what people will say, and I'm, I, I don't know this for sure, but I'm, I feel reasonably certain that most people that this is, this is how they will answer my, 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 my charge up here, where I say, how can a human who has divined the world in such dual ways come? To face any aspects of themselves that are human, if they say so, if they so singularly condemn so perversely the very nature of the humans themselves. So, uh, the answer is: you cannot logically divide human action up into valuation categories. Wait, where did I? Okay. Here, here, here is the retort, and I want to make sure you get this retort down here. Uh, and the retort to that might very well be: humans who act in accord with nature are acting in human nature. That's that's most likely. That's what I've gotten from folks that I've talked to in the past, uh, like ninety plus percent of the time. Okay, so na Okay, so this is my response to that. You cannot logically divide human action up in devaluation categories that claim objective certain truth. Nature as the placeholder of good is not your anchor, if you think it is, or the divider of heaven and hell, angels and demons. It is not objective truth, not scientific. It's not logical. It's not spiritual truth. It's, it's assumptions. It's assumptions made by humans. And not even all of the humans that claim such a banner of nature are in alignment with what they mean when they say that. So you're skirting on the flimsiest of uh, foundations there. And you need to tell me how I should listen to you in a way or, or listen, take your advice and follow it in a way that demonstrates how it benefits me. If you can't do that, then. I don't, I don't want to listen to your spooky language. Nature is a construct, a human construct, an entirely human construct. As a matter of fact, nature is a multiplicity of human constructs through the ages with many humans and their aggregates all the way up to the civilizational level of aggregation. Many different presuppositions regarding how nature relates to humans. Dividing the human from the natural and any part of the human constructs from the natural is to absolve yourself of your own nature, to not come to terms with the totality of what the human organism is. Because, I would suspect, you might fear having to face your own diminishment, your own unavoidable, unchangeable flaws. Ding! That means, put it in quotes, there's so much truth to be said in what you wrote, and on the main, I enjoyed what you had to say. It's a message I've been sharing for a long time in many forms, but it's but I stopped using words like nature long ago and stopped thinking of human action and fruit as being something different than wild horses grazing in wild meadows in any profoundly existential sense, which is what the concept of nature versus human creates. In my humble estimation, a separation of our action from what we are, an absolving of ourselves in a powerful sin-declaring tool against our neighbors, should we choose to use it that way. And we've won over or conditioned the masses to accept our terms of defining angels and demons by how they align with, quote, nature, a, divi a divineness that from the start denies human agency outside of that which serves it you don't really need the angels and demons creating concept of nature to call humans to what you really should if if you're if you if your desires are really as i imagine they might be be calling them to understand the bloody cost of their pursuit of preference and how that affects their continued pursuit of preference 
but to strip yourself of the power to use fear of hell as a conditioner of thought and action would require years and years more and tons more resources across the board to, quote, win over, unquote, ding, people to the practical choice of being ecologically harmonized as maximally as thought and action in current year enables us to be. You chose and continue to choose like most well-intended ding activists before you to deploy the same tools of manipulation used by the ones who created these institution, institutions of, of nature-eating power in the first place. Tapping into the archetypal nature, ding, of the human divide. The classification of human, ding, those whom we act consensually with for the good of our kind. And the classification of subhuman, ding, those whom we can coerce, manipulate, destroy for the good of our kind, ding. Your way leads to demagogues hiding behind nature shields promising to deliver to your kind the nature dreamers a natural humanic harmonic end of history but in reality they merely use the fear you help create with your angels <sighs> And demons narratives. I, I got to back up because I lost my place there for a second. Your way leads to demagoguing, hiding behind nature shields, promising to deliver to your kind the nature dreamers, a natural, humanic, harmonic end of history. But in reality, they merely use the fear you help create with your angels and demons narratives, along with the hope that well-placed words in visually stunning displays repeated over and over again are alone enough to create. You could literally just use the word hope. That's all you need. You could literally just use the word hope. Put hope with a face and with with whatever iconic hope icon iconic things your lands have that you're trying to indoctrinate or condition to respond in a certain way that is not inducive of somebody seeking consent from another human being. Uh, basically, it's like uh, it's a form of roofing that uh, humanity does to one another constantly. But it's uh, okay. It's a uh, it's okay roofing because it's words in in a manner of speaking. And uh, uh, so uh, there, these things are alone enough to create this 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 hope. And this will sweep in all manner of reforms, sting, and changes. Ding, to fundamental institutional structures that 20 years later will still be producing poison and still be creating conditions that allow the decreasingly few to existentially control the lives of the increasingly, increasingly vast majorities. Nature doesn't even approach the underlying causes of these repeating acts of violence that have been going on for thousands of years. But for that, well... You'll have to keep coming back for more. Reject the angels and demons in your head, Sopho Archon, and come to the place where everything is nature, and thus we can start having adult conversations that consider the actual needs of humans and their actual preferences as opposed to starting with an assumption of what human preference should actually be objectively. How does our authentic nature, not our idealized, demanded to conform to natures, conform with the externalities about us? How can we pragmatically create the best space for humans and that which we affect to do the least harm to one another? These are good questions. Questions that can be appealed to on the basis of human preference alone, not on the basis of a mystical notion called nature how how can we how can we provide the intention about us that gives us maximal opportunity to be what we are with minimal impact on the land around us these are practical pragmatic 
concerns that uh, invite a whole measure of human beings into that exchange. But when you start talking angels and demons, you're immediately hacking off significant parts of society who now must choose between this thing you called nature and their own very existence. Not good. And you ultimately are not going to end up serving nature, this thing you think is nature at all. You'll end up serving the people who, who maybe fund the power for you to write in the first place. Who knows? I have no idea who you are, what you are, where you're making money off this, or what, 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 what your status is. But uh, who knows? Uh, but, but more often than not, the people that had a voice to express these things that you express, they have behind them some very powerful, very wealthy folks who who love this narrative and all all the narratives that, that inform the angels and demons. And they're just as likely to, to fund the people that oppose you with their own angels and demons counters as they are to fund you. And maybe at the same time, because that's the nature of the divide and conquer methodology with which you're participating in. The better we are at living lies of our choosing while interfering the least with the world around us, the less we are dependent on the vagaries of those externalities if we rely in the end less on them. This this is a self-serving reason to support ecological harmony with human need, not the perpetuation of angels and demons that are perpetuating or that are perpetually co-opted by the wealthy few over and over and over again for their own designs. Listen, man, come to the natural side. So, so I said solo there. Sorry about that. So far, Archon, which includes everything every human says, does, and thinks. That's right, the natural side, which includes everything every human says, does, and thinks. The good, the bad, the ugly. The artificial, the simulated, the constructed, the chemical, the Wendy's cheeseburger, the NFL football helmet, all of it, all of it, all of it is natural. All fucking natural. Amen.